Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now it's very likely that it's just going to get darker and darker on this side um, because it looks like rain clouds, like storm clouds are coming in and it's getting grayer outside. I have my ring light on to try and balance the light I get from this side so I might have to readjust things as I go with this video. So <laughs> it's been a while since I last recorded a podcast. I think it was almost two months ago, if not more than two months ago, since I last recorded one. So I have a lot of stuff to show. But I kind of decided that since my last video was like, I think, two and a half hours long, I was like, I can't do it again. <laughs> it's too much. I can't record a video that would probably be over three hours long. I was like, we're talking like Lord of the Ring, Lord of the Rings like level with how long my episode would be so for my sake potentially also for your sake I've just gone with we're gonna split it in two I'm not gonna do part one part two it's gonna be two separate episodes because I have enough to like show off my finished objects show half my finished objects in this video half my works in progress in this video and then hopefully I'll be able to film maybe in a week's time, and show everything else. So, there's still a lot to cover, so it'll probably still be a decent length episode, it just won't be the mammoth episode that I released last time. There's a couple of things I want to cover before I get into the actual like knitting content, and normally I keep this kind of stuff at the end, but I was like, you know what, I want people to like hear it early on because not it, I know not everyone makes it to the end of my long videos. So the first thing, I wanted to quickly talk about my Ko-Fi account. Now I know it's officially I think pronounced coffee because it's meant to be like you buy someone a coffee on coffee. I say Ko-Fi because I think it sounds like lo-fi and I really like lo-fi music so I call it Ko-Fi. <laughs> Plus I think it sounds fancier than it is. So I always link my Ko-Fi account along with my Ravelry, my Instagram, my email, all of those things. So if, there's, if you ever want to get in contact with me, everything's always down below in the description box. But I wanted to mention my Ko-Fi account, first of all, to say thank you for everyone who's ever, you know, bought me a coffee there. <laughs> Though for me, it's more like tea, but I don't... I wanted to kind of share a little bit of what I use the money for that I get. For the most part, it covers things like shipping, if I do giveaways, can also go towards me buying prizes for giveaways. Sometimes it will also be um, if I need anything else filming wise, and I've recently bought something, which I'll go into in the future because there's a lot of other stuff I need to discuss, but that's kind of to give you a rough idea of what that contribution kind of goes to. And I wanted to mention my Ko-Fi account because people had um, donated, which is just thank you so much for anyone who did. I never expect it. You know, this content is for free. And the biggest thing for me is just it's so nice to interact with people in the comments. So like always love to hear what you're kind of working on and you know, are you working on your gift nets? Are you stressed about gift knitting with Christmas? Cause I know it affects a lot of people. But yeah, so what's on your needle while you're watching this video? That's always nice to know. Um, but yeah, so people <laughs> have supported me on Ko-Fi. Thank you so much. It's absolutely incredibly kind of you and never anything I would expect anyone to do, but thank you for anyone who does. And I wanted to mention my Ko-Fi, not just to say thank you to everyone, but also because if you're looking to knit the Dobler Tuffler or a felted slipper of any kind, by the pattern is by Sundersgarn. It's free, only available in Norwegian, Norwegian. And I translated it into English and in German, two separate documents. And it's for free on my Ko-Fi, not my pattern, not going to charge for it. Um, I just asked that if you're going to download one of the translations, could you please download the original pattern as well? Because there's certain things I specifically left out, so you would have to download it. Because you should go to the original source and use my translation as like a tool to aid you in knitting this pattern. 
And so a couple of people who have downloaded the pattern were then the people who then went, you know, thank you so much for the translation. Here's a small, or not so small in some cases, donation um, for, you know, translating the pattern. And that means so much to me because translating isn't easy and I can't charge for the translation. And I don't think I would want to anyway. So it's just really nice when someone, you know, recognizes the work that you've put in and then they give you, you know, some money. And it's like, oh, thanks. But it's just, you know, knowing that you're knitting them. And every time I get an email or someone messages me on Ravelry and it's like, I was thinking about knitting these and I saw on your page that you have a translation. Um, it's just really nice to interact with people and be like, my translation is helping. It's not perfect and I'm always happy to receive any sort of feedback. But so I wanted to mention that because it does mean a lot to me that people have done that. And then kind of going on from that, I wanted to mention the fact that for, I don't even know when I did it, but for a little while now, I've had super thanks turned on on my channel, um, which is just something similar kind of to Ko-Fi where you can just, you know, give whoever you're watching on YouTube however much money you want to. And it's just another way that, if you want to support people you like on YouTube, um, instead of just, you, you know, there's the option, obviously, leave a comment, like, subscribe, those things really help other people find our channels. And then, you know, we can make a little bit of money through AdSense, which can kind of give us a bit more time to record these videos and answer questions. And yeah, it's just nice to be able to get something back like that as well. And... Most of the time I actually use the money I get from YouTube to buy things for giveaways. Not always, but most of the time. And so super thanks is just, you know, you get a little, someone gives you money and it's just, it's really nice. And someone did that recently and it's just, it really means a lot. And I don't want it to sound like I'm only grateful, you know, when people give me money. I'm always grateful for anyone who watches, especially if you then also, you know, comment and like I said, like, and if you've subscribed and if you come back and if you, you know, people who will sometimes message me or leave a comment being like, not to put pressure on you, but when's the next podcast coming out? <laughs> and when people are just kind of, you know, they like what I do, they're invested in what I do. And it's just, that really means a lot. But it is also, you know, someone choosing to part from, you know, the hard earned money is also something I really do appreciate. And it's something I do want to mention. So those are those two things. Then I'm obviously back from the UK. Uh, and instead of like including everything in a like this podcast video or my next podcast video, I am actually going to record a separate video, mainly focused on like the yarn I've brought back but I didn't actually buy that much at Yarndale that was my plan to not buy too much I was mainly focused on getting some like sock yarn something inter interesting sock yarn and I mainly came back with yarn for sample pieces for some of my friends who dye yarn so I kind of wanted to show all of that off and what you're kind of gonna probably see over the next few months on my channel so expect a future video soon I didn't actually film at Yarndale I think I filmed like one little snippet of something I it was really busy and I'll get into that in the video but if there are any sort of questions and things you want to know about Yarndale about what I got up to or anything like that Feel free to leave a comment on this video. You can always also email me and things like that. And um, I'll make sure to include it in the video. And then the last thing, but which sort of leads into the podcast, like the start of the podcast, is what I'm wearing today. So I am wearing the Sundial Sweater by Iris. This was a pattern I test knitted earlier this year. The pattern is now out. It came out in August, I believe. And I knit mine in whole super soft held with knitting for olive mohair. And I love this jumper. I brought it with me to the UK and I wore it a lot. <laughs> it really was kind of the perfect piece um, to wear for 
the kind of like time of year it was and how the weather was. It's kind of like how it is in Germany right now. It you know we have a couple of like one day where all of a sudden it gets really warm, then it kind of gets to like it's okay during the day. You might need a light jacket, but if you, the sun sets and you're still out, it's gonna start getting cold. And so there's just this like up and down with the temperature. And this has been really perfect for that because it's not too thick. It's quite a light, airy material, especially because of the yarn I used. Because Holst Super Soft is so... It's a thin yarn, but it blooms, so it's all like airy and light. And then it's just, you know, mohair, and it's just been absolutely wonderful. So I specifically wanted to wear this today for the video because of how much I enjoyed wearing it while I was in the UK. And the reason that this is still under the, like, let's call it admin section of the podcast, is because if, one, I would encourage someone, like, you all to make this, but if you're interested in coming to East Anglia Yarn Festival next year, which is happening from the 18th to the 19th of March, and it's happening just outside of Norwich, and it's it's in a different venue to last year um but still you can reach it I think I looked it up and it was like you can get there by bus which is what I'd have to do if I went and it's going to be even bigger than it was last year so it's even more incredible vendors and it was already so amazing this year so next year I'm just hoping I can go because I think it's going to be even better but there's a knit along and a crochet along happening. The knit along is for the Sundial sweater. So um, not everyone, but quite a few people are hoping to knit the Sundial sweater for East Anglia Yarn Festival and then wear it at the festival. And there's also a crochet pattern, which just isn't my kind of style, but I'll include a picture and the name and everything. And so I just thought, you know, if you're interested in knitting it, even if you're not planning on coming to East Anglia Yarn Festival, you know, there's still kind of this knit along happening. So, you know, you could join in if you wanted to. So, that is it. Yes, that was like the admin leading into the actual like knitting content. So, I have quite a few finished objects to share. Oh, well, the sun's come out. And so now it's really bright. I've just adjusted the lighting a bit because all of a sudden the storm clouds are gone and we have blue sky. Anyway, um, I have quite a few finished objects, but like I said, this is only some of them, not all of them, because otherwise this video would be too long. So I've actually got spoilers for you. I've been, I thought it was quite nice to actually have everything like on the back. So, ah, I found the yarn. I was looking for some of this yarn and I couldn't find it. There it is. Uh, yeah, I thought it would be quite nice to have it in the back at the beginning. So it is just like a little spoiler of what's coming up. The first finished object that I have are a pair of socks. You might remember these if you've watched previous episodes because I shared one of these before because I had one finished already. And these are just a pair of vanilla socks. Um, I used as the, the contrast was a 20 gram mini from Pigment and Ply on her like yak sock base and it's just a black and the main color is from the yarn badger and it's called winter rainbow because it's also dyed on yak and so there's the like bright rainbow colors become much more like gray and muted so kind of like a winter rainbow and love these love these so much and i started the first one i don't know which one it was the day before i had my viva um in York. So that was last year in October. And I started the first sock. So I did the cuff and did like one round of the like body of the sock because there was a point where I knew I'd have to leave the room. The examiners were going to kind of discuss like, what did we think of the work? What did we think about her answers to our questions? And they then decided the outcome. And people always say, like, bring something to, like, fidget with because it can be quite nerve-wracking. And I was like, well, I'm a knitter. Perfect. So I knitted quite a bit 
on the sock. Though I did have quite a few people walking past and people were like, oh, have you got your Viva right now, Nina? I'm like, yep, just waiting to be called back into the room and be told the outcome. So I had quite a few people who were kind of talking to me. Um, and I wasn't as nervous as I thought I would be, but maybe that's because I knew I had my knitting with me and I just was just knitting away. But yeah, so they're both done. And I still have a decent amount of yarn left. And the yarn badger was actually at East uh, at Yahando. And I was so tempted to get more of this winter rainbow yarn because I love the colours so much. She even has each of the colours dyed up on 100 grams now. And I was like, oh, I can make a beautiful yak jumper. Just like a winter rainbow jumper. And she also sells mini skeins of all the different colors in a set and I was like oh, I'm so tempted and I was like no no you have enough yarn right now you can always do it in the future but then I was also thinking of just getting like another skein of the actual like self-striping because I've seen on Ravelry that someone did a pair of mittens using self-striping yarn which I never would have thought to use and it looked so cool so I might might use this I still have plenty to be able to make mittens so so it didn't need more and well done me for not buying it. But yeah, so that's my first finished object. And I actually finished these a while ago. I just keep forgetting to share them. More socks. I made some more Sunday socks. How many pairs did that make that I've ever made of the Sunday socks now? Five, six, seven, eight. This is pair eight. And these are for my grandma. So... With increasing price of everything, not just electricity, uh, I thought I'd make my grandma some socks. That's covered in like other like, bits of yarn to keep her feet warm. And the Sunday socks are really nice because they don't have to. You don't have to know the exact like shape and size of someone's foot because of the two by two rib. They're quite stretchy. And the yarn that I used is. Filcolana Arveta held double. And this is actually the yarn that I used to make my grandma her shawl. So I showed off the red shawl in a past video. And this is actually the yarn I had left. I think it was literally all of it went into these socks. And for one of them, I can't remember which one, I got to like here, used up the yarn that I was currently using, and it only had like five or seven grams that were like scraps and I was like are you kidding me now I have to use that and like weave in even more ends but it worked out perfectly I had like maybe two meters left at the end it wasn't a lot and part of the reason it worked out perfectly is because I did choose to make the cuff a lot shorter and they've been washed and blocked which is why the cuff is already folded down so my grandma knows like this is how you're kind of meant to wear it she can do whatever she wants but I was worried if I have the cuff like straight and not folded down that she might immediately assume you're meant to wear them like sort of like proper stockings and I was like no 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 so I thought it'd be good to send them like this and then she knows you know you can like, fold them down a bit more if you want to so I'm gonna finally send these off to my grandma because I actually finished those before I even left for the UK so I think I finished them like mid-September and they've just been sitting around because I haven't been filming. Because <laughs> I wanted to film before I left and to share all the projects that I took with me to the UK. But just didn't work out. I was too busy. The days where I could kind of film because I had the time, I didn't have the energy and just wasn't the mood. And I was like, I'm not going to force myself to record an episode. I was like, I'll just take pictures and I'll record an episode later. So... Uh, I then made another pair of Sunday socks for a friend of mine, Laura of Adventures in Yarncraft. So using yarn that was left over from the September sweater that I made for my friend Len. So Len had dyed this yarn um, and sent it to me to knit the September sweater as a wedding present for him. So I offered, he sent me the yarn because I knew he wanted... Um, the jumper but didn't want to knit it himself and I was like oh it could be a wedding present and I gave it to him at March at EAYF and the mohair he already had in stash and was dyed by Georgie of the Fiber Fox 
So I had quite a bit of this yarn left and I took it with me to East Anglia. And then Len was like, no, keep the scraps, you know, you can find a way to use them. And I had plenty left, so I made a pair of Sunday socks holding these two together. And I don't have a picture because I forgot to take one. And currently, you know, it's Advent season for yarn tires. And I'm like, I don't want to bother Laura. Um, she's aware of the fact I want a picture, but I was like, take your time. I am not in a rush to get a picture. Um, so there'll be a picture in the future up on my Ravelry. I might post it on Instagram. Who knows? But you can sort of get an idea of what they'd look like. And you can also just look at the September sweater and same fabric, different stitch pattern. In the form of the socks I just showed. Yes. I then have an old project and I finally finished. There was so much like stress and drama around this particular project where I was just, I almost thought at one point I was never going to finish it and I was just going to frog it. And I don't enjoy frogging projects because I try to be really careful with picking yarn and pattern combinations and things. And I was like, I wanted them. It was just such a pain. But it's the end of last mitts. I have two and they're the same size. <laughs> so if you've been watching my videos, you know that I started making these. I finished the first one quite quickly, actually. And I was like, it feels like it was way too big, especially like this bit here. It was way too big. And I was like, I think I should knit them at a tighter gauge. So I left that one, knitted another one at a tighter gauge. And that one then was like this one, this one, I can't remember. No, I, I do know. I don't know why. It's this one. Yep, this is the first one. Uh, well, the second one I ever knitted. And it fitted perfectly. So then I unraveled the first one I made, which was too big, and used that yarn to make this one. Now, the reason that I know that this is the second one I made <laughs> is because it's slightly longer because there's an extra repeat in here. So here I've done one, two, three, four, five repeats. And here I've done one, two, three, four, five, six repeats. <laughs> and I didn't notice until I almost finished the increases for the thumb. And I was like, hang on, what is going on? And I was like, no, no, what is with these cursed mittens? And I just decided I didn't care. I was like, it's fine. I will block it a bit more sideways and it will be okay. And it's not a huge difference. And when you're wearing it, you can't really tell anyway. But they're both done now. And I took them with me to the UK and, worn the, and wore them. Especially because my flight to the UK was at like 7.30 or something in the morning. So I had to catch a bus to the airport at like 4 in the morning or something like that. And it was cold. It was really cold, so I was wearing these. And it was also quite nice because the designer, so these are the Enderlass mitts, I can't remember if I said that, by Skandia. And Ellie, who is Skandia knits, was at Yarndale. <laughs> so I did the really awkward thing of being like, hello, it's so nice to meet you, but also I'm about to go fetch this project that I've made. <laughs> and, and look, they're your mittens and I made them. But I literally said it almost like that. I was like, look, I'm going to be really awkward for a second, but I really want to show these to you because I'm quite proud. And had um, a bit of a chat with her and it was it was really nice to kind of see her in person and talk about yarn. And I can't remember if we talked about PhD stuff because she um, has one too. But yeah, it was just really nice. And then I'm done. They're done. The yarn I used... Um, I've talked about it so many times. Rauma Finul. And it's amazing how much stuff I forgot to show off in my German one. And I'm doing it in this one. So you're probably going to not see certain things that I've included in my German one. Because I'll forget. Because I've included other things in here. Always happens. If you want the full experience, you need to watch my videos in English and in German. This is how much yarn I have left. So I used a lot more of this blue than the white, but it's a lot left. I could make another pair. I'm not going to. I might make more in the future, but not with this yarn. I'm going to use thinner yarn uh, and hopefully have a better time with it. 
because it was the yarn causing me problems, it wasn't the pattern. The pattern was fun. And even like this chart here, which was a bit more tricky to follow because the repeats weren't as, like it was charted the entire way across, whereas this is just like a short repeat over and over again. And even that didn't bother me. It was just the yarn wasn't the most pleasurable to knit at this particular gauge, but they are very warm. So considering the fingerless mitts, it's kind of amazing how warm they are because obviously it's I've done it at a relatively tight gauge to get the size I wanted and then because it's color work it's double it's a sport weight kind of yarn or a heavy fingering weight yarn and it's they're very warm and perfect for when it was really really cold early in the morning but I'm happy that they're done now they will get a lot of wear I am desperately wanting to cast on more mittens but to get some things off my needle first. So at Yarndale, I also wore something else. This, I don't remember which one's the front and back. This way? I haven't sewed a tag in, and depending on how, it, how it's lying, it's not always easy to tell which is the front and which is the back. But this is my finished Leto sweater. This is by Anna Johanna from Strands of Joy. Her knitting book and last time I showed it did I already have a sleeve done and I was working on the body I literally can't remember it's been so long but as you can see it is done now it is blocked and I wore it Saturday of Yarndale and it was amazing <laughs> a couple of people stopped and were all like what is that what are you wearing and what's the yarn uh, so speaking of the yarn it's the green Main colour is Ivy from Skein in the Stitch, who was helping at Yarndale. And my contrast colour is from Noodle Soup, but Jess does a similar colour. And last time I showed it, the colour work was relatively okay. It's just that the top here was puckering a bit. And it's completely smoothed out with blocking. Got to love blocking. And yeah, body, decent length. Sleeves, perfect length. And have this beautiful color work at the end as well. Love those leaves. And I was really worried last episode that I wasn't going to have enough yarn to get the length that I wanted. Pretty much the worry I have every time I now knit a jumper, apparently. And I was like, I think it should be okay. Like, if I use so much yarn for the sleeve and so much for the other sleeve, then I have this much left. I didn't need to be worried. I have this much left now. I can't remember how many grams it is. No idea what I'm going to do with this. Probably save it until I have more sport weight scraps. But And I didn't even like compromise on length. I really did it to the length that I wanted. And oh, isn't it so autumnal? I love it. And it was perfect for Yarndale. Saturday was quite a warmish day. But not as warm as it was last year. So I did wear this like the entire time of Saturday and it was perfect. Sunday was freezing. <laughs> like, it was much colder. There was a draft and I wish I had worn this on Sunday as well, but I wore something else and I should have switched it around and wore this on Sunday and the other thing on Saturday, but really happy with this. It's not something I'm going to knit again for myself because I don't really see why I would need more than one of this. But the colour work especially was really fun to knit. This yarn is so soft and squishy. So it's 100% superwash merino. Um, it's just lovely. But if someone else wanted one, I'd totally knit it for someone else. But I have no need for another one of these. Especially because I love these colours. Like, they are perfect to me. Why would I knit another one? It can't be as good as this. <laughs> so yeah, that one's done. And it made its way to the UK to be worn at Yarndale. And I loved it. And then the thing I wore on Sunday is a, another old project that I have finally finished. I'm so proud of this one. Quite a few people actually came up and they're like, sorry, can we just ask, like, what pattern is that? And I was like, it's not really the pattern that's doing the thing, it's the yarn. But I told them both. 
my telegram cardigan is done. <laughs> I finished this back in August, actually. It was one of the first things I tried to finish after recording. I was like, I want this done. I want it off my needles. So, one sleeve. Two sleeves. I had one last time. And the body was already done last time. So, it's all done. It just needs buttons. I haven't done the buttons yet. Because <laughs> I'm too lazy. So I took it to the UK and wore it on Sunday and didn't have buttons so I couldn't close it and it was so cold and this is fingering weight yarn whereas the other one obviously was sport weight and I was like I need something thicker um it would have been better for Saturday but it is a light weight piece and the yarn that I used is the 2020 advent from the fiber fox and I love it so much but yeah so this is the telegram card again by Becky Sorensen and <laughs> You know, it only took me, what, almost two years to finish knitting this. But I didn't work on it for quite a while. And then when I did it, actually went relatively quickly. And yeah, wore it a yanda, wore it a few other times already since then. And just need to actually sit down and add the buttons. <clears throat> I do have perfect buttons for it that have all the same kind of similar colors. So they're black with like sparkles of these different like colors. So it's perfect. And yeah, it's done. <laughs> so I really want to make another one because the original telegram, like down the body and down the sleeve has a cable pattern. That's where it gets its name from because it's meant to be like, like a telegram or is it, is it Morse code? Can't re no, yes, I can't remember now, but I didn't do it because I thought with the yarn changing color like this, it would be too busy. So I want to do a single colored one and include the actual like cable pattern. So I have quite a bit of yarn left, which I think is to be expected with an advent like this and my size. This is all the yarn I have left. I did a magic knot ball. This will go into something in the future. And I think it's like 104 grams left or something. And I had 24, 20 gram minis. And then also used pretty much exactly 50 grams of Sunless Gone Sisu in this dark, sort of mild black. It has some white bits to it. Um, yeah, so this would be enough to make socks, but they wouldn't be matching. And I don't think I'd want socks out of this, but it would go into something. Color work, who knows? So that is my other finished object. Actually, my last one for this episode. Um, I'm going to show one more thing, but that's not like anything new. It's more that I've done a sort of like mending sort of modified something that I've already shared before. I just realized I lied. Completely forgot some things. I did wonder. I was like, why am I getting through this so much quicker? The things that I don't have here to share, like the Sunday socks for Laura, don't have them because I gave them to her in the UK. There's three other things that I've made where I've got pictures that I took to the UK and now don't have anymore. <laughs> so the first two things are both crochet and it's a crochet car and a crochet cat. I just realized that's two C words, car, cat. But anyway, and those were two little like soft toy amigurumi things that I crocheted for Jess's kids. So she has a um, young boy and a young girl. And apparently they both love their little crochet things. I have a picture of her daughter with the cat and apparently she absolutely loves it. And the picture is adorable, but I'm not going to share the picture here. I'll share the picture of the cat, but not um, Jess's daughter because... Um, Jess doesn't really share her kids online, which I think, you know, it's everyone's choice if they want to do it or not, but I like her reasoning behind it. And, um, so I'm going to respect that, not show the picture on here, but you'll see the cat and you can just trust me <laughs> to know that, um, the picture is adorable and that little cat is being loved. And apparently her son, who's obsessed with cars, which is why I made the little crochet car, just like ran off with it immediately, <laughs> which is, I think, just really nice. And you never know how kids are going to respond to something that you've made, because especially when they're quite young, they might not fully understand 
you know, what it means and are kind of a lot more honest of like, oh, I don't want that. <laughs> so it's quite nice that they really enjoyed um, the things that I made them. And then the other thing that I made was something knitted and it's called <laughs> Knubbelchen. And obviously I'll include a picture of what the finished one looks like. And I made this for a friend of mine who had her first baby back in March and currently is teething and is just having a horrid time with it. Both mum, dad and baby are having a horrid time with the teething process. And I met up with her when I was in York, uh, which was the first time I actually got to meet her daughter, which was really nice. And I knitted her this little like knubbelchen and it's kind of intended both as like something comforting and a sort of cuddly toy, but it's only the head that stuff. The rest of it is um, just isn't filled. And so it's relatively lightweight. It's easy to hold on to, but it has little bits at the end where you make a little knot. And that can be quite good for teething babies to like sort of put into their mouth and sort of like chew on. And it's just a bit soothing on the gums. Can be, depends on the baby. And yeah, so I made this for her um, and got to give it to her. And she was like falling asleep and gave it to her. And she was then like holding on to it. And a few times was like, I'm going to put it in my mouth. And then was like, no, I'm not ready yet. I don't know if I trust this. <laughs> and just really cute. Um, and the yarn that I used for all three of those was 100% cotton specifically made for these kind of things and made for younger kids and it was by it was Rikurumi DK and yeah so that was three other ones that I forgot to mention and it was just really nice to you know make some of those more like toys that I don't get to make too often because there's only so many I need in my house um, even though you know I love soft toys I love little crochet toys that I make but shouldn't let my whole house be overrun by them. <laughs> I have plenty. And so it's just nice to be able to do it for people who have kids and be like, hey, I've got my, I made you a present. <laughs> Take this thing that I really enjoyed making. I totally just did it as a present. I didn't do it because I really wanted to. Anyway, and the last sort of finished object, but it's more of just something I've modified, is my tulip sweater. So I complained in my Make 9 update, I think it was, yes, that the neck opening, like the neckline, it was just way too wide. It was frustrating with how warm the jumper was to then have such a wide neckline, whereas like you're really warm, but then your like neck and top of your like chest here is cold. And it was just like, I hate this. And I was like, well, I'm not going to undo the whole thing, but I want to try and fix it. And people a few times already suggest, like, why don't you, you know, knit the ribbing longer or something like that. And I was like, well, it's knit from the top down. You start with the ribbing, doing a tubular cast on. And it means if I then wanted to pick up, I can't really pick up from the tubular cast on. It looks weird. If I undid the ribbing, I'd then be working in the opposite direction. And everything was just kind of like, I don't know what to do. But eventually I decided, I was like, well, either I do nothing and this beautiful jumper that I've wanted to knit for such a long time with this beautiful yarn where I spent so long looking for mohair just sits around or I find a way of just making it more wearable um, before I end up using the yarn for something else and then can't fix it anymore. So I fixed it. It was two evenings, I think. One evening to rip everything back, second evening to knit everything. I undid the tubular cast off, managed to do that without breaking the neutodin, but it then kind of got harder and harder to try and unravel it um, and keep track of all the stitches and things. So eventually I kind of just changed how I did it and cut into a lot of it because it was making my life easier and there was no way I was going to be able to save the yarn anyway. So what I then did is after I unraveled all of the ribbing, and had the stitches back on my needles, I knit one round where I actually work decreases. So I think I did something like knit three, knit two together all the way around. So I decreased by a lot. And I was a bit worried that it wasn't going to sit right, but I actually think it sits perfectly. So I sort of measured how big I wanted it 
to be and how big it was and that's how I calculated how many stitches to decrease and after that I switched to my ribbing needles made the ribbing a bit longer than recommended and then I didn't do a tubular cast on off I did a normal cast off because that's a bit it's not you can see it doesn't really stretch whereas a tubular one is much stretchier and that was part of the problem with the cast on it was so stretchy it was kind of getting bigger and yeah I'm really happy with it it sits perfectly now it's very similar to the sundial sweater without sits a little bit more open maybe but it's exactly what I want and it's just I love it so much and it hasn't done anything I was worried it would then kind of like pull in here weirdly but it hasn't done anything like that and I haven't blocked the ribbing I might give it a steam block I've woven in the ends I just haven't dropped them off and yeah so just wanted to share that modification I made and I'm really happy with it so now I just gotta wait for colder weather then I can wear it so that's all my finished objects and now we'll get into my whips M my whips <laughs> so the whips I'm going to share are about half of what I've kind of actively been working on and these are the ones I've kind of made the most progress on some of them you've seen before some of them you've at least heard of before and I think one is a new cast on two are new cast ons I believe and yeah so next episode you'll get more finished objects and other whips that I've been working on so let's start with one of my old ones which is in a project bag my mum made me with cute little sheep on it I haven't made a load of progress on this but I thought I'd share it it's just very slow going but I will not let that demotivate me so this is the brioche and mystery shawl by Susanna Sommer which was a mystery knit along last year like end of spring or something like that and the first clue was like finishing this brioche triangle and I finally started the second clue of it um, where I worked with my final color and now I'm kind of on this like triangle section um, so I've started working some like decreases and things to create that shape and yeah brioche is slow going especially because I constantly need to look at the pattern because the rows constantly kind of change but I enjoy the slow slowness of brioche it's just I don't often get to make time for this because of how slow it is it's mainly on like a Sunday that I'll allow myself to work like one or two rows of this and I do enjoy it <laughs> but I feel like what I need is like a holiday where I can just work on it for like a whole month or something and get it done but it's still gonna take a long time and it is something I'd like to try and finish sooner rather than later it's not gonna happen this year I just know it's not with all the test knits I've had going on and gift knitting I've got planned and things but hopefully I'll be in a point at a position beginning of next year that if I keep kind of working on it every now and then just a little bit that I can finish it early next year and finally be done with it and get to use it hopefully the plan would be uh to try and get it done so I can wear it next year spring that would be really nice so I'm just going to quickly show the yarn that I'm using so all four colors are by Cookston Craft, who's a hand dyer up in Scotland. And I absolutely love them. I like that these three these three don't have a lot of too much like contrast. And then I just have this kind of more of a pop of colour. Yes. So slow progress, but we're making progress. And that's what's important. Plus what's really important is I'm actually enjoying working on it when I get to work on it. Then, not that one, that's in the wrong order, this one. Another old project that I've been slowly putting in a bit of progress every now and then is the Novice Cardigan by Petite Knit. And since last time, I have now got two sleeves. So I think I only had one sleeve last time. And now I've got two sleeves. 
two full finished sleeves. And this now looks like a little like cropped <laughs> little vest um, cardigan now, which I think is funny. So I haven't got that much of the body done yet. It's harder to see now with the sleeve done, but from my finger here down to here. So it's not a lot, but it's also like not that many rows that I've worked to gain that much length of the body. It's on six millimeter needles. It's on relatively thick yarn as well. So it does grow when I actually sit down and work on it. And sorry, all the banging of my needles. And it is something that I'm trying to actively work on more and more because of the whole thing I mentioned in my knitting planning video of wanting to try and finish at least one old project a month. So I should actually say Telegram cardigan I finished in August and then the end of last mitts, the other old project I finished in September. I already have a finished project for October, but you'll have to wait till next episode to see that one. You can have a little guess down below what it could be. I bet you won't be able to guess. Then again, actually, you would be able to guess if, uh, depending on when videos come out. So you maybe, maybe would be able to guess. But yeah, feel free to guess below what it could be. And I'm hoping this will be done in November. It is quite a thick cardigan, so it is something I'd more want to wear in like the depths of winter. So having it for December, January would be ideal. And the yarn that I'm using is the main like thick strand I'm holding is Feeling Good Yarn by Wool and the Gang. And there's like red colorway where I frogged a whole jumper. And I'm using that squiggly leftover yarn first. And then I have like this half skein leftover, which hasn't been used at all. Holding that with Cumulus, nope, Fiber Spades. No, Cumulus by Fiber Spades, which is an alpaca silk blend. I'm holding these together, except for the cuffs where I replaced the Feeling Good yarn with one that perfectly matches the mohair. I only had one of these in stash. And I don't think I'm going to have enough yarn. I am going to knit as far as I can with these because this is all. I only need these as planned for the body. And the bottom ribbing will be in this dark red. So I'm going to see how far I can get with this. I'm not going to make the body like too long. I'm going to try and get to the length that I want. Either the yarn will run out or I'll be done with it. We'll see how it goes. And then the real problem is going to be I have more than enough to do the body ribbing. I don't think I'll have enough to do the button band with this. So I then neither need to see do I have enough of this to do the button band or it's easier for me to get more of the a Suri alpaca than it is to get more of the wool and the gang yarn. So I have been thinking about maybe trying to get a gauge with multiple strands of this for the button band and just do a gauge swatch, see what happens. Otherwise, I also have the option of, with these Sunday socks, I have um, Peruvian Highland wool and a very, oh god, my hair in a very similar shade of red, which when held with the Suri, I think would kind of look roughly similar. And if I can get gauge with that and the Suri, then I can always use that. So I would prefer to not buy yarn <laughs> and to use what I have in stash, but we'll see. Either way, this is going to get done sooner rather than later and ideally next month. So just got to keep working on it. And I'm not like stressed or worried about my yarn potential yarn problem because I know I'll find some kind of a solution. I don't mind that this is a bit scrappy in some ways. Like if I do have to just use random bits of other yarns, I'm okay with that because I think it will kind of add to the look of what I've already got going. So happy with that. And it does take me a while. I do like one or two rows every now and then. But if I actually sit down and work for like a longer period of time, so I get like six rows done, then I find it easier to work the pearl side because I'm in the flow and in the rhythm. So I just need to set aside time 
to work on that. Which will hopefully come soon. And it might be something I work on more in November. Because for the rest of this month I have some other stuff I need to focus on. But one of the test knits that I've been working on. Where the deadline has passed. So this was meant to be done towards the end of September. And it just didn't happen. Multiple reasons which I'll talk about. But this is the... Cosmo Cardigan by Rust Knitwear. And, as you can hopefully see, the body is done. A sleeve is done. Over half the button band is done. <laughs> I'm just missing the rest of the button band and the second sleeve. So even though I didn't get this done on time, I got to a point where half the button band was done, one sleeve was done, and that allowed me to estimate how much yarn I would need to finish the rest of the project and how much overall I would have, I would expect to use. Now that might be a bit different by the time I actually get to the end, but we're talking like a few grams instead of like 20, 30, 40 or more gram differences. So it's not bad at all. It's just this... A uh, double knit button band as beautiful as it is I really do love it it's not the easiest or quickest to work I have to use two millimeter needles to get gauge and it's just really slow going because if you have a work double knit it's all about you knit one stitch slip the next one with yarn in front knit one slip with yarn in front turn the work eventually when you're at the end of the row and do the same thing so that on the second row the stitches you slipped you now knit and it creates this like thick double fabric, which is beautiful, but so slow to knit, especially at this gauge. So the yarn I'm using is Pletilope and the Ash Heather colorway where I had a whole kilo and I will have plenty of yarn to finish this. And so kind of the story behind why I didn't manage to finish it, there's multiple reasons, but to kind of give a rough rundown of what happened, um, so I was working away at this and there were a few kind of issues with some of the pattern, making sure it all matches up and the increases and in where you start this like cable design and stuff. And so it kind of reached a point where, um, I was waiting to hear back, but I was also starting to worry. I won't have enough time to finish it. And I was like, you know what, let's just keep going. I'll just make up my own sort of thing. And I think I'd almost finished the body. I was definitely on the body. And then the test, the test, the designer of this pattern, uh, for personal reasons that I don't want to talk about because it's not my life and I don't want to share something that the designer isn't comfortable with, she ended up officially cancelling the test net. But then it was four days later. So I heard she cancelled it, you know. Um, tried to do what I could to make sure she was okay um, because it wasn't a great it wasn't great circumstances for her so I really felt for her and I'm never annoyed when a test knit or cancels a test knit you know you have to put yourself first you do what you have to do and she told us I'm like there's nothing else I can ask for and I knew how to finish it on my own so I wasn't you know annoyed from that perspective I was just worried about her so I then didn't really knit on this for the next few days because I was like, well, the pressure's gone on it on other things that I need to get done. And then four days later, she got in contact with all of us again and said, sorry, you know, with the back and forth, but can, is everyone okay to keep going with the test knit? So quite a few people had kind of got in contact with her and we'd gotten in contact with each other because there's a German test knit group and an English test knit group about trying to because we we're already quite through, far through the test net, a lot of people had already finished and it looked like there were only a couple of things that still needed fixing and it was more for like the bigger sizes, like the one I was doing. And they kind of said to her like, we want you to be okay and look after yourself, but we also don't want all the hard work you've put in, as in the designers put in, to potentially go to waste. Um, and maybe there's a way where there's minimal, minimal work for her and we kind of try and take care of most of it. So we tried to support as much as we could. And I think, you know, it got easier than starting to work again as she was working through her own things. 
So there were these four days where I wasn't working on it. Then it started again. And I think I was like almost done with the body or done with the body, something like that. And then a new chart came out for how to work this part where you've got the broken rib, which is then interrupted with this like cable, both on the sleeve and the body. Mine happens much higher up on the body than the original design and the way the designers work now. So she had changed the chart so it's more consistent between all the sizes. And that meant I either had to unpick like the entire body and this is pleasure lopi held single, not going to be fun. Or I just accept the fact that I'm going to have a different finished object at the end. And I was like, that's fine. I can't give as much feedback regarding like how it fits and how it looks because it's quite different from like with the look of where it like splits. But, you know, yarn estimates is still roughly the same. This will affect, like, because it's a different sort of pattern. But I was like, I'll make another one in the future, but I'm going to try and get this one done. Um, But yeah, so that was just with the starting, the stopping, which I don't blame her for. Um, And then also kind of feeling a bit like, what's the point in finishing if I can't really give proper feedback because it's quite different now, which is fine. Once again, I'm not annoyed or anything by that. It's just I felt like I had sort of failed as a test knitter because I didn't go back and redo the whole thing. But I was like, I knew I wasn't going to get it done on time and I knew I didn't have the time to redo all of that. Um, So I tried to just, I talked to her, emailed the designer and kind of asked like, what ideally would you like from me? And I'll try and get that done. So that's why I focused on getting the first sleeve done and why I got half the button band done. And since then I've slowly made progress and done some more on it. And ideally before the end of the year, I'd like to try and get the button band done. I would like the whole thing done, but it might not happen, but at least the button band and then the sleeve won't take me too long anyway. And I'm just really excited to wear it. And I'm really excited to make another one because I think it's a beautiful design. Oh gosh, my needles. So, A bit of like a all over the place sort of story with that. Um, And part of the drama also uh, was because of another test net. But I'll talk about that next week. Next week? Next time. Next next podcast video. I'm not promising anything about next week. So I'll go into that and hopefully remember to kind of link it back to this. Because there was just a lot happening at the same time. And it was just bad. timing unfortunate timing um so there's that one and then the other test knit i was working on other than the one i'm sharing next time is one i need to get done before like the 26th of october so i don't have that much left to do (laughs) depends from my perspective i don't have that much left to do uh because of like i know how quickly i knit and how long it will take me But this is the Pippin Sweater by Sophie, the Knit Pogo. Um, Yeah, that I'm test knitting. So the yarn that I'm using is Tinder by Hillesvarg. A yarn I just had in stash. Kind of forgot about. Um, And yeah, the body is done. And I have recently started the first sleeve now. So that's why I'm like, I'm not too worried because worst case scenario, I only finish one sleeve. I can still give feedback and finish the second one at some point. Worked top down in this beautiful sand stitch pattern. I love it so much, especially with this yarn. Like it doesn't show up perfectly because it's quite a fuzzy yarn, but I just love the texture. And the body took me so long to do. Like, it was fun because it wasn't just stock and knit, but this yarn at this gauge just hasn't been too fun to work up. I think it's a bit, like, it doesn't feel, like, dense and heavy, but I think the knitting experience would be better if it went for bigger needles. So I'm using 3.5 for the main body, and it was just, yeah, it just hasn't been that much fun. It's a bit better on the sleeves, I think, just because it's less stitches, and I make progress quicker. But yeah, I think if I knitted with Tinder again, I probably would go up to like 3.75, maybe even 4 millimeter. 
and I'd kind of got to a point, tried it on, it was above my belly button, and I was like, oh, we still have so much left in it. But I took a measuring tape out, roughly calculated, like, based on how much ribbing I have to do, okay, I think it was like I had to do 5.5 more inches of the body before I could do the ribbing. And then I was knitting, 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 and had a progress keeper in, and I got to, like, three and a quarter, three and a half, and I was like, but this looks really long. I'm just not sure if I should keep going. So I tried it on again, perfect length, started and I was like, I can start the ribbing. And I was like, yay, motivation. I feel good again. Let's do this. And then I got about 20 stitches in to the ribbing where I'm using 2.75 millimeter needles, snapped my needle. (laughs) Yay. So I was using my Chiagus. I have the spin ones, which are bamboo and it just broke right at the join the wood just snapped and part of me thinks that's not actually the needle's fault I think it's because this yarn just shouldn't be worked with needles that small and I was then like well great I have this deadline coming up for this and Sophie's very understanding about it so you know if I wanted longer she probably would give me longer um or say not to stress about it but I was just but I want this done (laughs) I was like And normally I would then kind of go, okay, well, my right hand needle broke, but they're interchangeable. So the left needle that was still a gate can go on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, I just need either the same size or even smaller is fine. But 2.75 is the smallest you get in the Chiagu set. (laughs) And while I have other needles, like in my red Chiagu shorty case, they don't fit on the same cable because it's a thinner, smaller cable. And I was like, okay, well, I could change to knit pro ones but then my gauge will be different because I know I knit even looser on knit pro because they hurt my hands and then I was like well we'll just have to order more I knew I was going to order more at some point anyway I need my 2.75s can't just have one so ordered more needles and then I was like well I guess I start working on the sleeve and that's what I did but then um, my parents have just recently been in Perth in Australia because my brother lives there with his family. So they were visiting my niece and all of them. And from there, my parents had sent me a parcel with like some goodies from Australia. So like food and things like that and other bits. And mum had actually bought some wooden knitting needles, quite like cheap ones, specifically so for herself and for me and included them in the parcel as a... Um, cheap option to use when flying so that you have the needles that you need but if they get taken away at security you're not going to cry about it and they arrived and they they go from two millimeter all the way up to like eight or nine millimeter and they had a (laughs) 2.75 so I got to finish the body (laughs) and I was really motivated at that point because I literally was like well I'm not going to get to do the body probably until the end of like the following week and I was like well I can do the sleeves but that was just making me sad because I wanted to finish the body I had like two skeins of yarn attached and was like this makes me sad and then yeah I had those needles and managed to finish the body and felt so good and so excited so they are quite cheap and lower like quality but the needles themselves are wooden and they're really nice to knit with it's just the like cable on them isn't the nicest so I kept having to like shove my stitches around but it wasn't it was actually quite a nice knitting experience especially the needles so now I just have the sleeves left to do and I've already started the decreases for that I've done one so far and I know sleeves for me I can get one done in a day if I really just focus on it So one weekend and this whole thing could be done or, you know, a couple of evenings and I can get it done. And then this beautiful jumper will be done. I'm definitely making more in the future. I love this design so much. It's just a bit more than a basic raglan and love it. So that is currently like the main thing I'm focusing on because I need to get it done soon. So I'm filming on the 18th today. And I have until the 26th. So I have calculated it perfectly. If I give myself three days per sleeve, which is more than enough for me, um, that's enough time to then 
block and give myself like a day or two for it to dry but it will dry quite quickly in this apartment um and then be able to take pictures and everything so it should be fine like three days for one sleeve <laughs> and then you know three days for the second one um though i think i'm now down to two days for the first sleeve so today and tomorrow maybe so that's not a big deal at all and yeah slowly making progress on that the last few projects one of them one of them you've seen before um but there's not much to show well there is a decent amount of progress to show but not much new to say these are the lotta socks from 52 weeks of socks so you can see finished one so i finished the first one and then immediately like i said i would started the second got to the end of the stripe section Needed to start the actual, like, cable lace section. I was like, I'm going to put these in <laughs> Um So I do need to keep working on this. Don't even have the needles on here. But that's for one of the other test nets that I was working on. Um, and I just need to put the needles on now because the other one is done. So you'll see about that next time as well. But... It's something I'm going to just slowly work through the rest of the year. I'm in no rush to finish these. Um, I should be able... In a day, officially, I could probably do the leg, most of the heel. Another day, do the leg. Another day, probably do the toe. So it wouldn't take me too long, but I'm just going to take my time with it, do a repeat every now and then, and by the end of the year, these socks will be done. And speaking of socks... Um, I kind of wanted to quickly say that my last video, the knitting plan video, I talked about Six Sock September, which I took part in. And when I filmed that, it was still August, I believe. Or beginning of September, something like that. And so I was all like, I'm going to do this. But it was already, it's already, it was already over by the time I posted the video, but I still wanted to include it. There was a lot of stuff I had to cut out because I was talking about like, certain things about like I want to do this when I'm in the UK and I want to do this at Yando and I was like it just feels weird now that I'm already back to like include it so I was like I cut a lot of it out but still included six socks September because I wanted to do the shout out and this one stop making noise you bag sounds like an insult you bag <laughs> but I finished this one this was the first one I finished for that challenge so you had to knit six socks in September there was no pressure to. This was the first one I did. I then did the two pairs of... Was it both of them? Yeah, both of them I did in September. So then that was five socks in total. So both pairs of uh, Sunday socks. That was five socks. And then I finished two other ones. Two other individual socks. Which are now completely done. Oh, share next time. <laughs> I keep teasing you, I'm sorry. So I managed to actually knit six socks, but this is kind of the one I really count because it's the only fingering weight sock that I finished. No, it's not. I did one other one. One of the two <laughs> fingering weight socks that I actually finished during the challenge. It's not that I don't think the other one should count. It's just more for me. I'm like a DK or thicker sock. It's just a pure fun. Like it's just so quick. And it's the fingering weight socks where it's a bit more of a balance of... It's fun, I'm enjoying the process, but I also just want this thing to be done. <laughs> kind of like a fingering weight sweater. So I just wanted to share these because um, next time I share them, I they'll be done. Like, no matter how much progress I make on them, I'm not going to show them. I've got nothing interesting left to say about them. Unless something ter terrific happens, terrible happens, then I might share them. But I'll attach the needles to this one and then just slowly keep working on it every now and then. The next two things are new cast-ons. So I started another pair of socks, you know, instead of finishing those, started more. And I posted about these on my Instagram stories. I shared them there because I just absolutely lost it because I was like, these are absolutely beautiful. Um, because a designer released... Um, Four sock patterns, all inspired by the four different seasons um, in the game Stardew Valley. And I love Stardew Valley. 
So I started the full socks. And you can see little trees. Most of the time you have three colours in a row, so it's it's a bit tricky, but I don't mind three um, colour colour work. So it's my tension between the cuff, the one, uh, the two colour colour work and the three is a bit different. Also just because it goes from thin to thicker to thickest. But they're just going to be beautiful socks. I'm not even sure if I'm going to wear them. I might just, you know, display them on my wall because of how pretty they are. So my plan is going to be just to knit one of each every season because I don't think I'm going to be able to get a pair done if I'm being realistic. So yeah, I started this and originally wanted to, as soon as I bought the patterns, I bought all four, went online and was like, let me buy a lot of Arvetta by Phil Kalana to be able to knit these. And then I went, surely I have enough sock yarn, like minis and stuff, to be able to do it. And I do. <laughs> Ooh, it's attached. Um, so I literally just went through my stash. There are some Arvetta classics from other projects that I have, but there is a lot of like hand dyed minis and things in solid kind of colors. Some yarn in here is even like scraps from other projects where I have like nearly nothing left, but they're for colors where I really don't need a lot. And yeah, just really enjoying them. It's a slow project, but I really love that. And it's just fun to see the color work like start to appear. And what was the reason I only got as far as I did is because the next color I needed to wind up again. And it was only the other day that I sat down, took out a load of yarn that I needed to skein up and skeined it all up. So then this morning, as I was tidying up before I started work, I did find another skein of yarn that I forgot to skein up. And I don't like skeining, uh, skeining up, winding up yarn, so it'll be a while before I work with it, but I'll share that in a bit. And the last project I have to share today is for one of the other make-alongs that I talked about, um, which is... The Hohi Fall Cow. So I mentioned I wanted to cast this on, and I have. So I'm making the Overthrow Wrap by Hohi Locatelli for the knit along. I am not going to finish before the end of the knit along. It's I think it ends at the end of November. I'd have to pretty much like almost entirely focus on this to get it done by then. I don't want that kind of pressure. I just liked having an excuse to cast it on. So this is the what I have so far. This is sort of like the end of the first kind of bit after casting on and now this new bit's gonna start and I just I want to take the time to sit down and start that section and work that section um kind of through or do most of it because otherwise I'll do like a row or two be like oh yeah cool get it and then take a break try to come back to it and be like wait what was I working and what am I doing I'm like so I want to actually dedicate some decent time to it and the yarn is all by the Fiber Fox. She dyed this up for me. And this mohair that I'm holding. So the mohair is held double. This color is called Wood Elf. And this color I've got running down here is called Walnut. And is on the Yak sock base. And it's just a fingering weight yarn. It's quite tricky keeping tension on this. But I think part of it is also because the mohair part is garter. There is a bit that that will block out and stretch out, and I think that will help with the tension of this. It almost feels like you're sort of knitting an eye cord, but it, it's it's just an interesting construction. But tension has just been a bit a bit tricky. Um, and there's five mohairs you work through in total, and I've got five different colors of mohair. And slowly, I'll just be working on this. No stress with that one, even though. There's like big prizes, I think, for the knit along and people take it really seriously. And I'm just like, not me. <laughs> you will go for it. You deserve the prize the prizes. I am I'm just not dedicated enough. That's all the projects that I'm sharing this time. So all the projects I have to share before this video. And then the only other thing I wanted to share is this is the skein of yarn I forgot to cake up. There is, so, what shall I start with? From Yarndale, there's quite a bit of hand-dyed yarn that I brought back to knit up samples. I mentioned that earlier, I believe. 
One of them is by Skein and the Stitch. So this is Jess. And this is her DK, 100% DK yarn. And I think the color is called Pastures Green. I think it's one of her newest colorways. I bought a sock skein, so fingering weight, and a 20 gram mini skein to make socks with it. And so she gave me the DK weight yarn to turn into the Felix cardigan. So that will be a sample piece that I'll hopefully be able to give her um, at East Anglia Yarn Festival. Fingers crossed I get to go over for it, otherwise I'll just send the sample. Um, so she gave me enough of this yarn to make that cardigan for her as a sample. And there is actually currently... So I need to skein this, cake this up so I can swatch to see kind of what needle size I need to use. But there is actually currently a knit along running for both the Felix pullover and the Felix cardigan. So she dy she's American. She dyes um, yarn under the name Fiber for the People. She has a podcast called Wool Needle Hands, and I really love it. It's one of the ones I've been watching for the longest. And so she currently has this knit along running for, I think that it's like beginning of December, maybe longer. I think an end date hasn't been decided. And you either, you knit one of the two Felixes. And I was like, well, perfect excuse. This will be the first sample piece I cast on because I came home with yarn for more than one. <laughs> but I'll share that in my yarn Yarndale video. So I want to cake this up so I can swatch and see what needle size I need to use and get started on it. Um, because it'll be fun to join in with everyone else. So that will be on my needles soon. And there's a couple of other projects that will be on my needles soon. While still trying to keep in mind my knitting like plans and goals for the end of the year. <laughs> I'm working on it. And I'll share a, I'll share those other new cast ons either in my next video. If I've started them. Um, or as future plans. And if I have too many things to talk about in my next video, I might just get bumped to the next one. Sorry. It happens. It's... When I can't film as often as I'd like, this is just kind of what happens. Um, that I can't always share things in kind of as real time as possible. So I ideally I would film every week because of how much I manage to knit. And people often do ask me, like, how is that even possible? And... I guess part of it is I'm not the like slowest knitter. I'm not the fastest knitter either, but I, I work relatively quickly. Depends on the pattern, depends on the yarn, depends on the needles. But it's also the fact that I will do whatever it takes to try and squeeze knitting in any time possible. So if I'm able to, if I go for a walk, I try to knit if I'm flying, if I'm going via, like going somewhere by train or anything, I will try and knit. When I'm doing my work and I'm reading, I will try and knit. It will also be when a lot of my work also focuses on kind of doing intense work for a while and then needing to stop and think about what should I do next? What's the best approach? And I will have pick up my knitting that is sitting on the side and I will knit while I do that. And it really helps me think and be more creative with my work. So there is a lot of opportunity for me. It's also with the kind of evening plans I have, for the most part, they're always things where I can knit. So I really do feel every available bit of time I have where my hands aren't doing anything, I try to knit. So that's why I make so much progress, why I'm able to finish things quite quickly. I also have to say, like, from size, a sizing perspective, I'm obviously not very slim or anything like that, but I'm also not... I sort of feel like I fall in the middle range of size-inclusive patterns. So I'm able to knit relatively quickly, even with having to increase length in the body and the sleeves, because... You know, I'm not knitting like a size that's, I don't want to say too big because that's, it's, that makes it sound like it's bad if you're making those sizes. It's more just, I'm not knitting jumpers that are incredibly oversized. Sometimes I do and they don't take me longer. Uh, I also try and always do a little bit of a recap and a rethink and 
sort of have, you know, like a um, quarterly meeting with myself about what is the next knitting project we really need to focus on. And while I have a lot on the needle and I do cycle through those quite a lot, there are always a couple of projects that I'm focusing on the most and will knit on like 80% of the time, if not more. So I hope that just kind of answers some questions people have. And yeah, so, and hopefully next year I'll have less projects on my needles, ideally below 30, ideally even lower. And I'll just keep working on getting that number down and then I'll be able to make progress even quicker. Cool. I'm going to stop it there. I am exhausted from talking. It's been a heavy talking day today. But thank you very much for watching. And once again, if you have any questions, please do leave them below. And um, if there's any podcast recommendations you have, I'm always looking for more podcasts. I've also been enjoying some Vlogtobers, um, watching some of those and thinking about vlogmas and all of that we'll see what happens but yeah thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye